project. As you can see, I've now got the seats in. As I mentioned on my last video, they are a carbon fibre skin. I think they're, they're glass, glass fibre behind, but they are very, very light indeed. They're, I think, three kilograms each. Um, I'll do a separate video to show you how I've done the, the base on these. I had to fabricate a couple of brackets uh, per seat and then put some standard side mounts on. Uh, they fit really well, uh, good for a Mini, they're nice and narrow, they're designed for a kit car, the sort of Caterham Super 7 style of car, uh, so quite narrow and fit between the roll cage uh, main hoop quite easily, no problems at all there. And surprisingly they are very very comfy, they do fit every part of your back and your legs and you, are, you feel extremely well supported uh, throughout. So yeah, recommended uh, seat. So the main event this evening uh, was to get the engine subframe back in the car. Um, very, very easy to do in fact. I found the easiest way was to suspend the engine to begin with in an engine hoist and then sort of thread the subframe on. Again, it's very, very useful if you've got something to help you do this. But you can easily thread the subframe on around the engine and gearbox, fit the mounts, bolt it all up and it becomes of course one piece then. And then I just use a trolley jack underneath the engine, gearbox, offered up to the car, jacked in position, put the bolts in and that essentially was fitted ready, just put the floor mounts in and that's good to go. So the next job uh, is to get the gear change done. So here I am, I'm actually under the car at the moment, just lying down with the camera so I'll try and keep things as steady as possible but just to get the orientation, this bracket, I'll just point to it here is the bracket at the rear of the engine, that's a standard Nissan part uh, but modified. The piece here just in the centre is a little uh, bracket I made using an old mini engine tie bar so it's got a rubber mount in the centre a little bracket on the back of it, I'll just try and get the camera underneath, a little bracket I welded on and a couple of nuts and bolts to hold that to the subframe. This piece here, of course, is a new section joining the two halves together. And then just panning round, this is the gear chain linkage on the gearbox here. Let's bring that into shot. And then here, as you can possibly see, not a particularly brilliant view, but this left arm just here has a gear change and the one to its right Again, I'll try and point to it best I can on this side here. Here's the steady bar that joins up to the gear linkage. And I'll just pan round just to show you what that is if you're not familiar. That's all fitted just in here. It's like quite a difficult thing to try and get a bit of light on there, but that's the gear change itself. Just back to the interior of the car, just one small detail here. I've now, as I've mentioned, I've got the seats in the position I want them in. Um, I'm six foot two, uh, fairly long in the leg. So the seat, as you can probably gather, is fairly well back, way past the B-pulse, as you can see. So I'm probably some six inches further back than a standard mini seat. And consequently, the gear change, this is a Nissan lever, by the way, and gator, is about at least six inches back from the mini position. So just here, just so you can see the, uh, the two linkages where the paint's been abraded, that was just uh, rubbed down. Uh, just to take a, about a section, about 50 mil out of each one on the straight sections, and then uh, sleeved and re-welded. Um, so they've fitted fine, no problems at all. And then just moving to the rear part of the mount here. One thing is useful to note: I'll just get my finger, just point to the mounts here. These two mounts here, is one each side. They're on adjustable slots, though. So if you've got a slight uh, error in the gear, gear linkage le uh, length, you can adjust it at that point. And then the bracket just here, that's a, a bracket I fabricated just to hold the gear linkage itself, this section here, to the mini floor pan. Uh, normally it sits a little bit higher uh, in the Nissan, uh, so that was just a little adaptation. One thing that has surprised me is the amount of engine clearance we've got at the back. There's plenty of room there for the inlet manifold, so hopefully no problem with that space for what I want to do. And then just moving around to the front. Uh, a fair bit of clearance to the front here where the gearbox, or the exhaust rather, is going to fit next to the gearbox, so straight through that uh, recess in the subframe below there. I'll just, uh, just do a shot from the front, just so you can see how it all looks uh, now it's in position. And I have to say, 
I think the engine in terms of proportion with the rest of the car is good. Uh, there's still a fair bit of space uh, to get access to different parts of the engine if you need to. And of course this car will have a removable front so that, will, uh, that good access will be maintained. One of the areas I've had real concerns about during this uh, build of the modified subframe at least is the clearance between the back of the differential just here with this red uh, pointing stick is and the steering rack itself and despite a lot of very very careful measurements I knew it was going to be very very close but it's actually ended up a bit closer than expected I've probably got a clearance at the moment of about 3 to 4 mil um, worst case scenario if I can't move the gearbox forward much more uh, I've got a little bit of clearance I can play with on the gearbox mounts I may get an extra couple of mil I could, if required, just grind the surface off the rack itself, just take a mill or two off that, and hopefully it should be okay. One thing I mentioned earlier was the crucial distance between the rack and the differential, which has, uh, as I mentioned earlier, caused me a few concerns. What I've done to hopefully overcome that issue, just where the um, subframe mount meets the floor, I've put a little packer in here, just as a temporary measure, just to try something, I think it's about 4 mil, and that's what that's done is re uh, opened up the gap essentially in here uh, by just lowering the rear of the subframe down a little bit. I've gone from a very tight gap to something that's probably just about acceptable. So, what I'll do, I'll make some packers about 5 mil thick in aluminium, same shape as the mount, and they'll be sandwiched between the floor and the subframe mount just to drop it just slightly at the back. So we go on the inside, the gear levers uh, now in position. I have changed over the gator, that's now a mini one rather than a Nissan one, just because it's just a better scale for the car. And the important thing is the steering column itself, that's now in. It's uh, a 13, uh, I think it's a 330mm steering wheel, uh, so it's sort of suede rim, it's quite a nice wheel. And the important thing, these brackets here, these fit to the cage. Uh, they're off the shelf part, they're fairly readily available. And that's then coupled to the steering, uh, mini steering column, which has been cut down to that length. And then at the bottom here, what you can see, I'll just zoom in for you, is a coupling now, which is just to be fitted uh, off an MGF. So that's a double uh, swivel joint to connect from the end of the rack, just there, down to the floor where the steering rack comes through. So now what I've got is a driving position, uh, which is good for me, I'm six foot one or thereabout. And basically I've just taken the dimensions from the pedal box area through to the back of the seat, uh, the seat back, um, measured that to get the right distance. And I've used a BMW 3 Series to get the reference points. And then the distance between the back of the seat and the steering column, the height of the steering column from the seat and so on, Everything's referenced back to my 3 Series, which I just find a very comfy car, so I've just used that as a uh, standard. So everything's fully adjustable. If I need to move the rack up or down, I can do it on those two brackets, just by simply uh, undoing the D-shaped bracket on the cage and then swiveling up. And then the bracket, which I'll just zoom into here, is a fabricated affair uh, based on an exhaust clamp, a couple of bits of aluminium, aluminium angle. So I can again, I can adjust that up and down just by moving the uh, whole positions around. So all being well, it should be a very, a fairly comfy car as many as you can.